Hey everybody, it's the coach. You're tuned in to Sunday Night Football on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one, between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Chargers. With that, let's get out to Southern California with the call from Los Angeles. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach. Coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports brings us to Southern California and Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Chargers. From up top next to Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And, folks, we were already excited for this game. And then before the contest, you and I are down on the field outside the white lines. Yes, we were following the rules. We were following the rules. And a ball comes over our direction, but we can't see it. Somebody yells heads up, and instinctively you turn around and you snare it one-handed with your off left hand. So now we're really ready for football. No gloves either. No gloves. No gloves. Not like what the guys are wearing playing the game now. But wasn't that a whole lot better than that time we were down there? And I got the coffee spilled on me when I got nailed by the punt returner. That happened to the Vikings, right? Yeah, it's a much better job of being heads up this time. Thank you for the, thank you for the notice. On to get us started now, the kicker, Chris Boswell. And we are underway in Southern California. This one taken from the seven. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Out comes Phillip Rivers in the Los Angeles Chargers offense. A disappointing week five for the Chargers. That loss to Denver drops L.A. to two and three on the season. Phillip Rivers in that game, 211 yards passing, but no touchdowns and two interceptions. On the season for Rivers, interestingly, just seven touchdown passes. And you look back to 2007, every year he's been between 26 and 33 touchdown passes. Very consistent, but this year on track to go below those numbers. And L.A.'s offense struggling. 20th total offense in the NFL right now out of the 32 teams. Gordon happy to be back in the fold after reporting to the Chargers on September 26. And you know, the fan base is happy to have Melvin Gordon back as well. Week 5, his first game back, 12 carries, 31 yards. And he certainly figures to be the bell cow in that backfield for the Chargers going forward. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Working out of the gun, Rivers. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. And we get a quick look at the Chargers starting offense. I have to admit, I've rather enjoyed watching Melvin Gordon's improvement as he's developed as an NFL player because it started for me in college. Every year he was in school, he would add something extra to his game. First year, he knew how to run. He wanted to add pass receiving to his game. The next year, he wanted to add pass protection to his game. Did all of that, that turned him into a first rounder and now a front line NFL back. Now they run from the gun with Gordon. And he is gonna be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's gonna go down as a loss of five and it brings up third down. Stephon Tua came out of Notre Dame as another one of those really tall defensive ends, and you just wonder, would they be able to have the leverage to bend and make plays? I think he just gave us an answer with that tackle. The Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Play fake to Gordon, now Rivers. Completes it to Davis. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A big gain of 28 as the drive continues. A nice little completion there by Phillip Rivers. And you and I were reading the article yesterday, fifth grade. Rivers had to do a project where he had to make a poster about his dreams and aspirations, so he clipped out a football player from a magazine article and pasted his face on the helmet. That's what he wanted to be, and it turned out okay. Not so bad, not so bad at all. Remember, he's the son of a coach. 
And on that play, I think he made the old coach proud with that completion. Now Gordon on first down. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. The tackle there by Mark Barrett. And the starting defensive unit here for Pittsburgh. Bud Dupree came out of the University of Kentucky determined to let everyone know that they play football there as well as basketball. A terrific pass rusher off the edge. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Rivers going to turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. Wait, 89. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, they took the shot, didn't get it. And there's definitely a difference here because they had a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they pushed it. Instead, they'll likely settle for three. Yeah, opening drive, holding him to three. Psychologically, maybe a win for the defense. And his kick is indeed good. And the Chargers grab themselves a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive does yield points. Maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Steelers now to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by a third-round pick back in 2018 out of Oklahoma State. It's Mason Rudolph. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here's Rudolph. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. And let's take a look at the Steeler offense. In the center for Pittsburgh, Marquise Pouncey, one of the most physical and agile players at his position in the league. A seven-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro. He's the keystone of one of the top offensive lines in the league. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Give him six there, but now it's third. An extra defensive back on the field for the Chargers now on third down. From the gun, here's Rudolph. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Credit the sack to Joey Bosa. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. 
Deep for the Chargers, Desmond King. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 24. Rivers to throw it. Blitz coming and down he goes. Terrell Edmonds comes flying in from safety for the sack. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Now Rivers going to give to Gordon on the draw. And maybe Shane's in the steel curtain here as the Steeler defense drops him behind the line again. They lost two there, and it's third down. They can't come up with something here. They're looking at a quick three and out. Well, guess what? You get the ball in the hands of your best player to his favorite play and try and salvage something out of this drive. Now, of course, if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're thinking the exact same thing. So they better provide him some help on this one. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Off the play fake here, Rivers. He's going to air one out. And that is incomplete. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. Fourth down and on is Ty Long to punt. Back deep for the Steelers, Ryan Switzer. It's taken to the 26. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense takes the field again here. As we discussed earlier, they are 1-4. and four. All the quarterback woes that we talked about. The defense continues to be the strength of this team. In Week 5, getting five sacks, three interceptions in the loss against Baltimore. But gosh, you thought maybe this Steelers team was starting to get some traction Monday night, week four, when they took care of Cincinnati. But now back in the loss. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Ready? 18 Gator. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Two. From the 36, Rudolph. And the catch made by Johnson. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does. And we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practice now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. That's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. 
This is a guy who made a Pro Bowl in his second season, James Conner. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. An extra cornerback now in the game for the Chargers here on third. Out of the gun, Rudolph. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he'll take this to the 47, but no further as they get him down well short of the line to gain. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Charger first. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all offseason about our season open Black opponent, 15. and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I would missed him, it <laughs> would have been, been a different a story. Long night. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Gordon, a pro bowler for the second time last season, 885 yards, 10 touchdowns, and that was only in 12 games played a season ago. And he also switched jersey numbers in the offseason from 28 to 25, and 25, that's the number he wore when he was dominating the Big Ten college gridiron for the Badgers of Wisconsin. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 11 yards there, first down. Although his reputation a speedy runner precedes him it's always fun to watch him work it is eye-opening isn't it because when you see him get the ball and just go in addition to that speed it helps out his blockers they don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them so following the run by gordon here's first and ten and now some motion before the snap and this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings that's going to set him back five yards Following the penalty, here's Gordon. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. On second and 15 now, Rivers has got it to Williams. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 26. down it's Gordon and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage it's a loss of a yard there and it's second down by Cameron Hayward's ability to take on blocks hold the point of attack and get upfield 
Serves him very, very well. What a nice play there. Yeah, he can take on blocks because he's built like a block. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Charger football to start quarter number two as they've got it second down and eleven. On second and eleven now, Rivers. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 14. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now a tenth carry for Melvin Gordon. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get him the next. And Davis gets in for a Charger touchdown. From 13 yards out for the Chargers, they're able to widen their lead. Now that touchdown won't allow you to totally relax, but you can breathe a little easier now. Just increased their lead. Now the try here for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. So first and 10 now from the 30. They start with a give to counter. And an alley to run. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. On second down, Connor looking for space. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Ready? 
They'll get nothing out of the completion there, and it leads to a fourth down. They dialed up the blitz on third down, and your worry as a defense that they can hit you with a big play in that situation. Instead, the blitz pays off, able to rally to the football and make the play. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And we spotlight Keenan Allen as he gets set to go back to work. Second quarter here, he has only one catch, but they have the lead. you got to think there's going to be more involved at some point. That's what you would expect, but sometimes what defenses do to take away a player of his magnitude, it costs them in other areas, and right now, with them losing, they may have to change their focus, and maybe he will open up a little bit more as the game goes on. Well, so far, just the single catch. A gain of six there on first. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Let's see what you got. Play fake, Rivers. And that is caught, one-handed. Oh, my, he pulled it in. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. It's a gain of 34. Sometimes the one-handed catches are unnecessary, but he was trying to ward off the defender with the other, so maybe there that was just a good play. So that tells you that not only do they imagine those types of catches, they actually work on them with defenders jostling them in order to keep their concentration and haul it in. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Allen's got it complete. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the 37-yard line. Set, round 80! Go! Go! Now it's a bootleg with Rivers. It's Williams on the catch. Give him 15 yards on that one and a Charger first down. Now he's the guy, Mike Williams, that the Chargers took seventh overall a couple of years ago. Battled injuries as a rookie, but in full health last year, he caught 43 passes with a knack of really finding the end zone. Ten of those 43 catches went for touchdowns. Rivers with a first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Again, it's Rivers. Letting one go deep for the end zone. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. The secondary has been roasted in this first half, but they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back. But that's one step in the proper direction. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Rivers from the gun on third down. And this is complete. It's Allen. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, the ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Now Rivers. To the end zone, but knocked away and incomplete. Steven Nelson able to get a hand in in coverage. Now we got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle, partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Here's Rivers. And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. Bud Dupree in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. And his kick here is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. They had it first and goal, three attempts, couldn't get it in, so they settle for three. Yeah, the field tends to shrink a little bit the closer you get to the goal line, doesn't it? It doesn't sound right. It sounds a little counterintuitive. But you run out of space to run the deep route, so they can just sit on the shorter stuff if you're going to throw it. If you want to run it, there's just not as much space. They end up having to take three there. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. On second down now, it's Connor. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 11 yards there, first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Let's go now. Dirty base. Because it's just the mic. Hey, tight, tight. No, no, no. Check that. Check that. Thing. Go. On first down, Rudolph. And his throw is incomplete. James Washington was the intended target. And now it's second down. On the ready. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Rudolph now to throw. Got an open man. It's Washington. 
That catch good for five. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The last play on the completion got him half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Shotgun snap for Rudolph. And he finds McDonald. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 30. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Now this pass to Vance McDonald complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. First opportunity for the Steelers in the red zone. They've got a first and 10 from the 10. On first and 10 is Connor. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play. From nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Joey Bosa, his second sack of the night. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield, get after the quarterback. It's been such an impressive first half to get that lead. And the Steelers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 14. Rudolph. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. This a 43-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good. And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13 to 3. Boswell signed to a four-year deal prior to last season, but he struggled a little bit. Yeah, do you think that they saw 13 of 20 when they signed him to a four-year deal? Not at all. Needs a big bounce back in 2019 if he wants to see the end of that contract. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. 
And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and ten from the 25. Kill, kill, kill. To throw again. Rivers. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven. Past the 30 to the 32. That's a gain of seven. Brings up third and three. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. The Chargers on third down, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. From the gun, Rivers. Open man is Gordon, complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. It's a gain of nine yards, and that'll make it second and short. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. To throw again on second down. Rivers. He's got his tight end complete. It's green. And he'll take it down shy of 45 at the 46. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. This will probably be the last play of the quarter. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we send you to our EA Studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out. To Brandon God. All right, coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Back onto the field comes this offense, and we're going to focus now on Mason Rudolph. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. 
Just the hits keep coming. And taking those sacks, that's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with a quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. It's nearly a 40-yard gain on the opening play of the quarter. It's your first drive of the second half. You're down on the scoreboard. Maybe just say to yourself, let's take a shot, see if we can shake them up. And boy, they hit that one. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Ready, ready. On the run is Connor. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Ready, ready. Thank you, Gator. Now whistles here before the snap, but it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. So that'll back him up five. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. Now it's Rudolph. Looking sideline, incomplete. Vance McDonald, the tight end, was the target. But now it's third down. Well, let's see, he was 8 of 13 prior to that pass, now 8 of 14, Charles. Yeah, that's not horrible, but he's been under a ton of pressure throughout this game, not able to stay on his spot. You know, quarterbacks talk about that all the time, being able to get to one place, set up and throw. When they make you move a little bit, oftentimes your accuracy suffers. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. But it's not been the best game for him, but he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete, but you're right, hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. On the right hash, officially, this will be a 51-yard attempt. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good, off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me, what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not, is not the misses, it's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league, they don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. From just shy of midfield, Rivers finding Green complete, and they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A gain of 13, it's a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets him up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. He wipes out the penalty yardage with a good run to get it back to second and seven. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. They keep it on the ground. Again, Gordon 
And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Let's put that team on the bus. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And he's got his tight end complete. It's Green. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, Look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up a lot. Accelerating, and off he goes. The 20, 10, touchdown Steelers. We talk about it a lot. One of the dangers of the long field goal, you got to kind of hit it low and drive it. That makes it susceptible to a block here. Not only do they block it, they return it. And how about how well they did on the return where they didn't create a penalty? Oftentimes in that type of a scrambling situation, someone will clip, someone will block below the waist, right? It, you name it. In this case, though, that didn't happen. They formed it up, and he took it all the way back for a touchdown. Boswell good with the extra point. And the lead down to three at Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded at the 8. Then he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. The last time they had a little bit of a special teams breakdown, that field goal was blocked. Yeah, and everything has to be precise in the kicking game. Right Snap, in. hold, Black kick. Heaven. Obviously the blocking to keep people out. So what you really want to do is get in there and get six points and take the pressure off of those guys. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. They're able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. From the 35 on second down, Rivers, the rookie from Michigan there defensively. That's Devin Bush making the play. But there was no trace of nervousness there. He was able to diagnose that play from his linebacker position, stay in excellent coverage, and bat the ball away. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Working out of the gun, Rivers. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Here's Ty Long now, as he's on to punt for L.A. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the 
three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five. But we have seen teams be bold here and take shots, right? Sometimes you go max protection, make it a one-receiver route, and take your shot downfield and see what happens. And occasionally, we've seen success occur. Give them a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Throwing on second and eight, Rudolph. He'll find Smith-Schuster, that's complete. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. So still backed up, but the situation not as dire now. First and 10 at the 14. They run with Connor. They had a very short pick up there across the 15 to the 16. It's Melvin Ingram on the tackle. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They'll throw right sideline here is complete. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. And now he'll tuck it and run. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27 yard line. Now Rudolph. He's going to wind up and air it out. That's caught inside the 20. And he'll be taken down deep into Charger territory. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 57 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Here's Rudolph. Rudolph loses the football. It's out. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle on second down Samuels and he is met quickly in the backfield down he goes folded like a lawn chair he'll wind up losing a yard on the play and they're going to be staring at a third and long here so on the heels of the sack, they knock him backwards in the running game. So now it's up to the offense coordinator talking directly into the helmet of his quarterback to instill a little bit of confidence here. 
call the play with authority, call with confidence, and let him know this one is the winner. And facing a very tough third and 19 here after both of those running plays went backwards. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. Joey Bosa, my goodness, make that now five sacks for him in this ball game. Really, really turning in an incredible performance. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. This one from 46 yards out. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that's going to tie us at 13. So that drive began at their own three. They wind up getting three out of it. And to me, the mentality to begin the drive, that was probably the key to everything. Let's just make sure we take care of the football, give ourselves some room, and maybe punt it away. Instead, it started at the three, and it ended with three points. Square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get it up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Check, green 80! Hey, green 80! The busy night continues for Gordon as he gets it here. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Stefan Tuitt, the one that got him down. Now his carries tonight, they're getting up there, so maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action, but other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. It's caught by Davis. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. Rivers now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. From the gun, Rivers. And a scary incompletion. Almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Rivers incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Throwing again. Rivers. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 45-yard line. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. Now Rivers. This one caught by Davis. 
This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Gordon. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard, stop short of the 35. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Now a 20th carry. Number 20 here for Melvin Gordon. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. On the delayed handoff, this is Gordon. It's big Vince Williams who made the tackle. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On second and nine, Rivers, and that's complete. It's green here. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Ready! 380! Watch the screen, watch the screen! Watch the screen! On third down, Rivers. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Steven Nelson. And he will take it on out to the 20-yard line. The intended receiver there, Allen. So how about that for a momentum switch? We're in the fourth quarter, and it's a tie game. You've got to take care of the football here. Now their opportunity to take the lead right out the window and everything is flipped in the other direction and the Steelers set to take the field and a methodical drive last time but they couldn't get that knockout blow they had to settle for three but you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired, and if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield and giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Brings up second and nine at the 21 yard line. Second and nine now from the 21. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one-yard pickup. Sets up third and six. Throwing on third down, here's Rudolph. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down, so hang on. A big call coming on third down. Well, the crowd doesn't like that. Was going to bring up fourth, now it's first. <laughs> they don't like it at all, do they? It brings them back into it, 
but really not in a positive way. Now they're angry. That can jangle a team a little bit as well. Pass interference ruined that series of downs for them. That time on the outside, pretty nice job as a cornerback to shed any would-be blockers and make the tackle. And think about the praise we're giving him, what his coaches are giving him, but how about the respect he gets from his teammates to be a complete corner who doesn't just cover receivers, but also tackles ball carriers. And now this throw complete to Washington. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. That's on Marquise Pouncey, the former Florida Gator. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. They'll try the air now. Here's Rudolph. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Ready, set. From the gun on third down, it's Rudolph. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 41-yard line. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually you're going to run into their territory. And that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or a play on the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. This quarterback now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. Rudolph now to throw. He's got the tight end, Vanan. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Rudolph throwing again. And yes, complete to the tight end McDonald. That one a gain of 20 in a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Here we go, here we go. 70, Indy. Five. From the red zone now, Rudolph. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to the air, Rudolph. Yeah, a quick throw here, that's complete. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. catch took him two yards in the wrong direction so now what can they do on third on third down it's counter and he'll get this down only to the 18 just a one yard pick up there and it'll be fourth down well they certainly had success throwing the ball in this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play stopped after a very short gain but i wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback it makes it very very difficult for him in that situation so now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming this to break our fourth quarter time and boswell's kick is good and that will break our tie and give him a three-point lead so no problems at all on that one and, and you know there's virtually no win this is a kicker's dream here tonight it absolutely is isn't it so to me 
With no wind, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Let's go. Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you... And got his man complete. It's a gain of 34. Come on, baby, let's go. Get tight. Let's go, let's go. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them the lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. Phillip Rivers, no stranger to fourth quarter comebacks. He's led the Chargers back to victory 26 times coming into this year. But work to do here if he wants to add another notch to the belt. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. That feels like an accumulation of the pressure we've seen all game. I mean, he's been on the turf a whole lot because of sacks. Eventually... Something else happens as well, and this time it was a turnover. Yeah, caught up to him. And now out come the Steelers. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Now left side on the swing pass. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. The last catch took him two yards in the wrong direction. So now what can they do on third? From the gun, here's Rudolph. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. Clock running Ready, under four to play now as they come up on back. first and ten. Push him back. Ready. Shoot. Rudolph looking to throw it. Got an open man. It's Washington. The completion good for three and it's second down. It's a pick up of three. Brings up second and seven. At the 29 yard line. Four receivers now in the formation. Three to the left, one to the right on second and seven. Rudolph going to throw again, and it's complete. He gets this one to Washington. 
A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. It's a gain of six. And it's third down. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Again, it's Rudolph. But it's brought in by Washington. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. They'll run on first down. Connor. And able to get him inside the five here. Just inside the five to about the four. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. Again, it's Connor. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Third and five. This will be the eighth play of the drive. On third down, it's Connor. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. So here we go. On now is the kicker, Chris Boswell. From the left hand, should be a fairly easy one here. Boswell's kick is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction all of a sudden. Yeah, for the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Rivers gets set to lead this offense. Down by six, a minute 46 to go. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. He'll look to throw. He's got his tight end complete. It's green. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That one good for 13 and a charger first. That gets him the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw. It's Williams on the catch. A well-executed 22-yard gain. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. Still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, yet a guy's still looking for a timeout or trying to stay in bounds? He got it done. Oh, 
So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. They'll look to throw. He's got his tight end complete. It's green. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 18 big yards on that one, and a charger first. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. He's back to throw. He's got a man. That's Keenan Allen. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. All right, let's just put it on the table real quick here. This is two-minute drill. you got to know they're looking for their number one receiver. Yeah, you think they'd be ready for that? That time, they weren't. Rivers has been through this many times as he'll hustle his guys to the line. Back to throw. And this is incomplete. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late-game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw's made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted five times in their many chances thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So this defense, they looked a little shaky to start the drive, but bottom line, they're a play away from finishing it off. They rocked them a little bit on this drive, didn't they? But as you and I both know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. They have a chance to end it right here. So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. Rivers to throw for it on fourth. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. So a tough pill to swallow there. A would-be touchdown pass in and out of his hands on fourth. Sometimes it just comes down to execution, doesn't it? Because we're always questioning, should they go for it, should they not? Is it the right play call? Is it not? In this situation, everything was right except for the finish. You have to catch the ball and convert. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. They begin on the ground here with Connor. And a short three-yard pickup gets him up to the 15. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever. Whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say good night, everybody.